coming up. Did you write or not write legal opinions related to the declaration of emergency? I will refuse to answer your question directly. Thank you. For my um, round? Before you do, Chair, can, can I raise a point of order? You can. Um, it, it's highly unusual for a witness to indicate that they, and respectfully, sir, that they will not answer a question to a parliamentary committee. Just for everyone's edification, when we talk about solicitor client privilege and what it covers, it can even cover the fact that an opinion exists or a number of opinions exist. And that's what I wholeheartedly disagree with Mr. Varani's interpretation that the mere fact that a legal opinion was prepared and delivered to the government constitutes privilege is ludicrous. Are you familiar um, with Standing Order 108 that constructs committees, sir? This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Did you write or not write legal opinions related to the declaration of emergency? I will refuse to answer your question directly. Thank you. Monsieur Fontaine, I'd like to pass the floor to you for um, my round. Before you do, Chair, can I raise a point of order? You can. Um, it's highly unusual for a witness to indicate that they, and respectfully, sir, that they will not answer a question to a parliamentary committee. They refuse to answer a question. Uh, I think it is um, incumbent upon witnesses to understand the power of committees and that they have obligations to answer questions. They can answer them in a different way, but refusing to answer a question is not an option. And I would uh, ask that the committee compel a witness to answer the question that Mr. Fortin provided to him. On the same point of order, Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I think uh, the Deputy Minister um, has indicated where he can. He's been very forthright. And where he cannot be forthright, he's indicated. And just for everyone's edification, when we talk about solicitor client privilege and what it covers, it can even cover the fact that an opinion exists or a number of opinions exist. And that's what Mr. Digg was was. Uh, explaining at the very end of his question. So there's a basis upon which certain things cannot be responded to. I've been at this job for seven years and I've heard many witnesses not answer certain questions sometimes because it's out of their realm of understanding or their scope or their expertise, etc. So I'll respectfully disagree with Mr. Motts. Mr. Brock? <clears throat> with all due respect <clears throat> to my colleague, Mr. Varani, that is not a legal interpretation of what has just transpired. We had a senior government official, in fact, apart from the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General, the highest senior official from the Department of Justice, refuse to answer a question posed by a committee member. Uh, without citing cabinet confidentiality, without citing solicitor and client privilege, I wholeheartedly disagree with Mr. Varani's interpretation that the mere fact that a legal opinion was prepared and delivered to the government constitutes privilege is ludicrous. We are not asking at this stage for the content or the theme. We're not asking whether or not it was delivered in person, by email, we're not asking about the date. The question posed by Monsieur Fortin was very general. Did you sign a legal opinion before the Emergencies Act was invoked? To which the witness stated very emphatically that he refused to answer the question. So I am asking, Mr. Chair, that you direct the witness to respond appropriately as opposed to a simple refusal. Mr. Chair, if I could just add two very brief points. Very briefly, please. One is that um, with respect to the, the fact that perhaps you don't want, uh, an, perhaps a, a member of the committee doesn't appreciate an answer or like an answer doesn't mean that the question wasn't answered, first point. Second point is that this committee doesn't have the power to compel a witness to answer a question. Only Parliament does. Only the House of Commons does. And the third point is that I find this a bit um, curious insofar as last week we passed a motion that talks about production of documents, including uh, legal advice that would have been provided. 
and uh, that, that answer will be forthcoming. I think there was a time window put on that production motion, so perhaps some of the answers my friends are seeking will be provided when those, uh, product, when those productions are made. Mr. Daigle, can I ask you if uh, we were to go in camera, would you be willing to uh, be more forthright in, uh, in answering these lines of questions? So, so I did refer to solicitor client privilege uh, when invited by Monsieur Fortin to decline to answer his question. That's the reason I'm not answering his question. Uh, and whether we're in camera or not, I don't think is going to change. But I take note of the motion that was passed a few days ago, and the government will consider uh, how it can respond uh, by the end of the month, which I think is the time frame for the response. Are you familiar um, with... Standing Order 108 that constructs committees, sir? I am, yes. And that there is no bounds through which our ability as committees duly constituted by the House to send for people uh, documents and evidence? I am, yes. Are you familiar, and, and you may or may not be, but uh, I'll state for the reference of this committee that in 1891 a witness before a committee of the Senate of Canada objected to answering questions given as his reasons that he was not in any way obliged to give uh, the committee information relating to these affairs and that the uh, committee had ordered the witness to answer but he refused and the committee reported his refusal to the Senate and requested that action of the Senate uh, thereon and the report of the committee was adopted by the Senate and the witness was ordered to attend the bar of the Senate the witness was ordered by the Senate to answer the questions of the committee after he agreed to do so he was discharged from the bar there is jurisprudence within our system um, that these committees are supreme in their ability to investigate these issues. And so I guess I, I would Chair, like... Chair, can I just... I would like... I, I, I have the floor. I would like to just, um, you know, put to you that uh, this committee has been duly constituted under those provisions. And the convention of cabinet confidence is just that. It's never been conceded by the House of Commons in any kind of jurisprudence. It's just a, conven a convention. Mr. Nakfi? I was trying to just ascertain whether you're asking these questions as a member of this committee or uh, no, as, as a time running or as a chair. As a chair who's considering the decision of, of, of what's before us right now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Point, Mr. Chair. So that's exactly the point I made. The jurisprudence you just referenced showed that it went from a committee to the Senate, which then compelled the witness. That's exactly the operation that would need to be followed here. Should, you, should this committee wish to pursue it, it has to go from the committee to the House of Commons to then compel a witness. That jurisprudence is established. Uh, but the second point is that cabinet confidence was not raised by Mr. Daig. Solicitor client privilege was raised. So let's please not conflate the ideas. Crown privilege? Is that what, is that what you're... Solicitor client privilege, which covers not just the advice, but also the mere fact that the advice exists or the number of times the advice has been given. Which There's is aligned with crown privilege, correct? Solicitor client privilege, which is crown privilege. No, no it is no, not. Okay. No, it is not. So, it is the is the is the privilege. I'm going to take a moment and just recess. Then I'm going to come back to this. Can I just, chair, before you do that, please? Can I just suggest that uh, uh, we just uh, put this in advance for now and consider it at some point down the road? There's uh, questions that we need to ask in limited time, and I would ask that we I'll, just hold I'll it. I'll pass the chair and some, I'll uh, put my question. I have a comment, Mr. Chair. What I've understood and what Mr. Verani is saying is that the witness is talking about solicitor client privilege, okay, but it doesn't apply in the case before us. Mr. Daigle is not here as the Minister of Justice's lawyer. He's here to represent the Department of Justice as a deputy minister. And as a deputy minister, he doesn't benefit from the privilege he's invoking when he talks to his boss. This guy's garage. Like and subscribe.